Hello and welcome to our coverage of the ongoing general and state elections. I'm Frank Rausen Pereira and today we will take a look at the state of Kerala. So let's begin our special segment, Rajanama. The Congress Party is the voice of everybody in this country. Give a chance to BJP. We shall provide the governance you deserve. Well, the 20 Lok Sabha seats in Kerala will go to polls in the third phase on April 23rd. The state has an interesting political history with the reins of power traditionally getting swept every five years between the two main political alliances, the Congress-led United Democratic Front and the CPIM-led Left Democratic Front. But in this election, the BJP is looking to improve and widen its footprint in the state that has so far defied the social and political logic that informs the rest of the country. This Lok Sabha contest is also a fight for relevance for the CPIM. It must do well in its last bastion in the country as it fights to retain its national party status. The Congress, on the other hand, needs more members in Parliament to be a meaningful national force and Kerala is being looked at as the party's safe harbour in the South. Kerala, God's own country, a state with 100% literacy, a religiously diverse population and a set political layout. Of the nearly 3.4 crore population, more than 52% live in rural areas. Although the state has a Hindu majority, it has a sizable minorities population as well. Around 26.56% of the population is Muslim and 18.38% is Christian. For decades, the state has been a battleground between two fronts, the UDF and the LDF. The two coalitions have ruled the state alternately for years, with Kerala being the left party's only bastion in the country right now. In this election, the BJP has emerged as a strong third contender. The party did not win any Lok Sabha seat in 2014 in the state, but it did increase its vote share from 7% in 2009 to around 11% in 2014. With the Shabarimala issue having gained traction in recent months, it is also counting on the Hindu vote this time. There is also a visible push to leverage its position. Analysts, however, believe that the BJP's entry will benefit the left parties as a triangular contest will most likely see the BJP eating into Congress votes. The CPIM-led LDF, on the other hand, needs to do well in the state since it is already on the decline in its former strongholds, West Bengal and Tripura. A poor show in Kerala, too, could spell the beginning of its end on the national level. In 2014, the LDF had sent eight MPs to the Lok Sabha, with five of them coming from CPIM. This time, it has fielded 16 candidates, 14 of them will contest on the party symbol, while two would be fielded as LDF-supported independents. The remaining four seats have gone to the CPI. The Congress, meanwhile, needs to do well in Kerala as it tries desperately to keep and increase its numbers in Parliament. It's now time to go across to our data center where my colleague Smithy Rastogi is standing by. Over to you. Thank you, Frank. Welcome to the Rajya Sabha Television Selection Data Center. I am Smriti Rastogi. All 20 Lok Sabha seats in Kerala will go to polls in a single phase on 23rd of April. The direct contest in this southern state is between the two main political alliances. The Congress-led United Democratic Front and the CPIM-led left democratic front, with BJP-led NDA becoming the third force. In the 2009 Lok Sabha polls, the United Democratic Front won 16 of the 20 seats in Kerala, 
while four seats went to the left democratic front, BJP didn't win any seat in Kerala that year. In 2014, the UDF suffered setback and lost four seats. Its final tally in the state stood at 12, while the NDF bettered its tally to win six seats. The BJP couldn't open its account in the 2014 either. Two seats went to others. In terms of vote share, in 2009, UDF got 47.7% votes. However, even though the LDF won only four seats, the vote share of its two main constituents, the CPIM and CPI, stood at 37.9%. The BJP fetched 6.3% of the votes, while the remaining more than 8% of the votes went to others. In 2014, UDF lost around 7% of its vote share, winning only 40.84% of the total votes. LDF met with the same misfortune, losing around 8% of its vote share compared to 2009. The left parties could manage to get only 29.5% of the votes. However, even though the BJP failed to win a seat, it managed to improve its vote share, taking it from 6.3% to 10.5%, a rise of 4.2%. Over to you, Frank. All right, Smriti, thank you for taking us through those uh, numbers there in our data center. Let's now have a discussion in our studio to talk about the state of Kerala and what to expect really in the elections on the 23rd of April. Let me welcome on the program Rajesh Sundaram, senior journalist, KG Suresh, senior journalist as well, and KV Prasad, senior associate editor of The Tribune. Thank you to the three of you for joining me on India Votes 2019 today. KJ Suresh, I'd like to begin the program with you. You know, as we saw through our data center, the BJP's vote share has only risen from the 2009 election to 2014 election. And if you go back to the recently held assembly elections as well, the BJP managed to open its account in the legislative assembly. Yes. Is the BJP now a force to reckon with in Kerala or is it still going to be a two horse race in the state? Well, primarily it will continue to be a two-horse race. But yes, you see, please remember that Kerala is a strong bastion of the RSS. Unfortunately, that acceptance of the RSS within the majority community has not reflected in, in, in terms of politics. And that is generally blamed due to the lack of a proper leadership that the BJP is having out there in the state. They have been raising many issues from Nilakal issues to a lot of issues over the years. But this time, the Shabrimala issue has come as a big boon for them. And uh, now, please remember one thing. By and large, the minorities who have a sizable population in Kerala have voted for the UDF by and large over the years. And the CPM, CPI, very ironically, the left is seen as the Hindu party in the state. So when you see all these political clashes happening there, you know, between the CPIM and the RSS and BJP, it is basically a turf war because both of them are claiming the Hindu constituency. And this Shabrimala thing, again, it is not only the BJP, even the Congress has been playing the soft Hindu to align so far as the Shabrimala issue is concerned. They have also opposed the CPM stand on the issue. CPM, while making a lot of noise initially, now they have also stopped taking, you know, young women, uh, you know, giving them police escort and all that. They are also playing it safe. But BJP, of course, took the initiative and staged statewide and even countrywide protests. That they are hoping to reap benefit from it by exposing the left. But having said that, this is also a fact that primarily this battle is between the Congress and the left. In BJP had an assembly, uh, entered the assembly in the last assembly area, it was their maiden entry into the. This time they hope to make it uh, to the Lok Sabha, primarily in the uh, constituencies either Tiruvananthapuram. Trishur or Patanam Titta. Patanam Titta because of its proximity to Shabrimala. This is the this, this is the picture as far as BJP is concerned. 
द अदर पार्टी विच इज सपोर्टिंग इट नाउ भारतीय धर्म जन जनधर्म सेना नाउ दैट पोलिटिकल पार्टी इज प्राइमरली ऑफ द एस एन डी पी विच इज द विंग ऑफ द इजवास यू नो द पोलिटिकल विंग ऑफ द इजवा कम्युनिटी विच इज वेरी इन्फ्लुएंशियल बैकवर्ड कम्युनिटी इन केरला एमंग द हिंदू सोसाइटी बट दैट डजेंट हैव एन इलेक्ट्रल प्रेजेंस बाय एन लार्ज द नायर कम्युनिटी विच इज अगेन यू नो ए वेरी प्रीडोमिनेंटली नायर कम्युनिटी अपर कास्ट देयर दे हैव ऑल अलॉन्ग बीन मेंटेनिंग एन इक्वी डिस्टेंस between the two parties and their representative organization called the nss or the nair service society has also this time also decided to maintain equidistance now in this scenario what is interesting is the clash between the cpm and the congress with rahul gandhi deciding to uh, you know contest from wayanad hmm. which is at the trijunction of karnataka tamil nadu and kerala now what while the congress party is asserting that that is because kerala has always been important for some of its topmost leaders have come from kerala and that south is very important but obviously the bjp and the nda ha- are putting it across that you know it is because he is afraid of imminent defeat in amethi, amethi that he has come here right but what the cpm is questioning is that you could have gone to karnataka because if your entire idea is to defeat within courts communal bjp then why are you fighting against us because there in wayanad primarily the contest is between the congress and the cpi but there is no bjp is not in the picture at all because it is a minority dominated constituency right so all these dynamics are there and as your report rightly put it for the cpm also it is a kind of battle of honor because having lost tripura and bengal this is the last bastion absolutely let me bring in the other panelists now into the picture kv prasad let's we spoken about the bjp let's speak about the congress now how important is kerala for the congress party it has always done well the udf has done well in this southern state it's important because it wants to take its tally up in 2019 and thus Kerala is important. See, in any case, uh, the Congress had an upper hand when this election came. The UDF-led Congress, uh, Congress-led UDF, because the cyclic nature of uh, which we spoke in the earlier segment of the show. Having that in mind, and also one of the factors that the Congress was uh, fact uh, were looking at is the minority votes. There was a there were reports that suggested that the minority votes were getting scattered. So thereby, it's not that the the left was not wooing them. in their own form and fashion they continue to woo some minority votes which is okay and they the question of the muslim league iuml was with congress for a very long time and remains part of their i think so all these kind of factors do work for the congress so congress wanted to consolidate its base because it's not just contesting the lok sabha elections also has to prepare itself for the next round of assembly elections two years down the line and very well knowing that the bjp is trying to build in a big movement as a party which can convert its vote share into seats what happened in the last assembly elections we saw that only one seat of mr oraj gopal was uh, was one nemon nemon that was also because mr raj gopal happens to be representing that constituency in, in he was a member of raj sabha from madhya pradesh and he was a union minister in uh, vajpayee government so there was plus he was elder statesman kind of a thing so there was a lot of goodwill will the same thing apply to mr kumaram rajshekaran the former the president of the bjp who has worked as a bjp state unit so these are the factors the bjp is now looking at it i think for the congress it was important that it consolidates its vote base and vote share and move forward because when the fragmentation with bjp and rss trying to make inroads rss always as suresh put it had a very strong presence so you try to maximize this argument the left has made which suresh was alluding to could be a, but remember the fight whether it was why not elsewhere it was between udf and ldf so the question of eventually the battle was always i still remember a very interesting anecdote which uh, was given by former minister das munshi he was referring to when the upa got support from the left he said it is like east bengal and mohan uh, east bengal and mohan bagan fighting each other in calcutta but when you fa- play for the country they all work together <laughs> so it's a, it's politics is the art of possibilities that's all i can say right let's talk about the left now and the ldf adi sundaram so is the left fighting for survival 
Absolutely. If you see uh, their vote share and the number of uh, states where they represent, that's diminished over the last uh, few years. And for them, uh, like Suresh was saying, this is the last bastion that they have to defend. And, know, uh, and given the, the cyclical nature of, of the politics in Kerala, they know that they're on the way out. So there is a desperate attempt to cling on to whatever they have and, uh, you know, consolidate from there. Because uh, these elections come at a time for them immediately after the losses that they've had in Tripura and, of course, uh, the, 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 the kind of thing in, in Bengal. Yes. So this is uh, a, a desperate time for them and they know that there is a resurgent Congress uh, which is there and it's also encashing the wave uh, that you know comes with the cyclical nature of the this thing. And so uh, for them, it, 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 it is a tough time, it's a tough election. So if, if the left does not do well in 2019 in Kerala, will it be the beginning of the end for the left in the country? Well, you know, for most political parties, there is, <laughs> they, they come to this uh, position where they come to the brink and then they can reinvent and come back. Uh, for that, I think they should have, a, you know, come out of the closed confides of their ideological uh, base and move into a more pr pragmatic zone. I think that's what's really led to them shrinking uh, across the country. I think it, it would be for the leadership uh, or, or new leadership to come in and for them to be more pragmatic to the to the electoral realities and uh, move themselves out of the ideological confines into which they've uh, now locked them into or find themselves uh, you know with the, with their backs uh, to the wall right kj suresh talking about leadership is there a leadership crisis as far as the bjp is concerned in kerala i asked this question because you know someone like a kumanam rajashekaran who was you know in mizoram in the raj bhavan had to be airlifted from there brought to the hot and humid streets of Trivandrum, you know, traversing through those streets uh, close to the coast. So, is there a leadership crisis and was that why he was brought in? Uh, rather, I would say that, you know, I don't know why in the first place Mr. Kumanam Rajshekaran, who was the party president in the state, was airlifted to Mizoram hmm. in the first place. You see, that's so that he had to be brought back. He has always been a, gra he was never that governor kind of a person. He was a very grassroots level RSS Karikarta, who actually had lot of acceptance even among the Christian community, you see. And he had reached out to them and uh, he was a grassroots level worker. So, obviously, you know, when it was felt that to take on, now Raj Gopalan is uh, not keeping well, he is also, uh, you know, uh, aged. So, to take on someone like Sashi Tharoor in a constituency where BJP feels it has the potential, it needed a somebody with a lot of acceptance and that is why it was decided to bring in. But as I said, that one of the reasons despite Kerala being an RSS stronghold, it is uh, really an irony that BJP has not been able to cash in. Uh, come to think of it that when BJP thought of inducting a minister from Kerala, it had to depend on a former bureaucrat, Mr. Alphonse, uh, you know, who was based out of Delhi to be made a minister rather than somebody from Kerala. So that shows the kind of, and there is a lot of internecine battles going on within the state unit itself, you know. So all these factors are there. So there is absolutely no doubt that there is no young and inspiring leadership as of now. And that is one reason that despite literally, if you use that word, God send opportunity of Sabri Mala, they have not been able to politically encash it to the extent that they could have for the simple reason that you don't have a, a, a leader around whom the youngsters, the women, everybody can, can rally really around. rally around, you know, that they have not been and that would be one of BJP's challenges. All the leaders are very senior. There are very few, you know, young faces who are there. So I think that is very important that, you know, they should cultivate a, uh, and develop a second line of leadership which has to take over only then there is a future. I mean now you have put somebody like Suresh Gopi who is a film star uh, from Trichur. Now yes Trichur he will give a good fight no doubt about it because Trichur as you know is the place where these battles between you know uh, bloodbath between CPM, RSS and all these people are going on. Kannur, Trichur that part. But the fact is that in Unlike, say, Andhra Pradesh or Tamil Nadu or even Karnataka, film stars have never succeeded in Kerala, you know. Uh, because of its huge literacy, 
the people have always rejected i mean you had at one time somebody thought of bringing prem nazir as a you know he was the superstar but he could not sheela came into politics but nobody succeeded i mean except that maybe innocent uh, he is now you know an ldf member of parliament but beyond that they have never succeeded you know as an icon in rest of the south as they were able to do it this they have not been so uh, i think that they will re- they should really go for some you know uh, developing some good youngsters who should in the coming days be able to take the mantle forward right uh, right all right uh, so can you proceed to yeah. add to that yeah. you know we were talking about the vote share you know we said we stopped at about 10.3% mm. in the lok sabha election but 2016 assembly election they actually raised it to above 15%, 15% yeah. and with the shabrimala that would have gone up slightly higher as well to encash that uh, you know is, is something that they have failed you know to to mm. to, to actually that, turn that into yes, seats really. yes, yes, you see yes. the vote share is increased Gradually over the years increase, yeah. but it has not resulted in seats we'll talk about shabrimala later on in the program because i want to dedicate about 10 or 12 minutes on shabrimala because that is a burning issue really on the ground but uh, if i could you know take a point that kg suresh was making earlier kv prasad about uh, rahul gandhi contesting from wayanad now you know like you mentioned yourself uh, natural allies the left and the congress at the center bitter enemies in kerala Rahul Gandhi contesting from Wayanad has that only antagonized the left do you think well it could have partly because uh, within the left uh, cpm in particular there was uh, two very distinct camps one which led by sitaram yachuri which was trying to have some kind of working arrangement if one may say so he tried in west bengal to despite the party's opposition in the last assembly elections and this time again there was some kind of a talk about it and the other left by karat pinarayi vijayan all of them very very clearly that nothing to do with congress in fact if you look at the last party congress it had ingrained in the party congress uh, resolution that uh, while fighting the bjp remains a priority while uh, ensuring that it, they the question of even having a secular allies was a matter of big debate because that interpretation was being stressed to congress being included in it so they made a very categorical line that no congress no alliance or no understanding with congress so there was a very clear animosity one may say so or a political it it was like in kerala it was next to impossible to imagine congress and left will do to business together it's like it's the simply two ends of the pole so there was no question of meeting bengal because of the circumstances had chose change uh, the bengal unit went differently if you look at the left uh, calculation the last four years i can just give you a small uh, memory from the 2004 when congress president then congress president sonia gandhi was building an alliance she reached harkishan singh surjit to try and see come out with some alliance that he told very clearly listen there is no way you and i we congress and left can do business because we cannot agree with your neoliberal policies your foreign policies doesn't suit us so these are the two areas of the economy and business uh, the foreign policies don't gel so we don't go to you maximize your seats we maximize our seats and we'll see later which is what resulted in the upa formation in 2004 so that thing is always there it's i mean it's very difficult to say that congress and left can do business in kerala i mean they've alternate all the i mean there's ground level it's so difficult to translate it into any kind of understanding leaders are, of course are been at each other's throat for all the time unless you have a bjp a resurgent bjp which will pose a threat to both like you know something SP, like in, in SP and bsp yeah, in up i mean yeah. they were traditional rivals they came together to counter the bjp no, but so maybe in a on a future date sp bsp you know, worked together in 1983 they did business together 1993 but for that uh, incident of mayawati's being physically attacked and you know that and for 20 years they separate 25 years so whereas congress and left kerala i, I mean Uh, in last 70 years i don't see yeah in kerala they have they not have but they have worked together at the, the national, national level they have worked the together the first yeah. communist government in kerala was dismissed by the congress in the center right right so that having been said rajesh sundaram 2019 april 23rd for all the three political parties in the state a make or break election would you think absolutely but of course going into the elections it is the advantage uh, uh, the the udf you know the congress so and of course the resurgent bjp is something that people have to watch out for will they be able to translate the the kind of growing vote share especially uh, among the the irivas and the dalits uh, nayars of course have always been with them uh, 
you know they could they could just about get a get a seat or so you know like uh, suresh was mentioning uh, the seats you know i would want to add to thrissur uh, uh, patnam titta and uh, trivandrum palakkad as well where palakkad they have a fighting right. chance so any of these four the corporation they have a good number of seats yeah. right so any of these four uh, if if th that comes in that would be uh, you know after many years that they would be getting into the the lok sabha from from kerala absolutely all right talking about issues now in kerala kg suresh let's keep aside shabrimala we'll talk about it after the break uh, at length what are the other issues do you believe that are going to have an impact on the elections in kerala you, uh, you see generally except for karnataka where bjp has made deep inroads the southern states have never been if you look at the electoral results also over the past i mean they have generally not been on national issues by and large south has gone by its own issues it had its kaveri it has its you know krishna water this thing i mean you look at it any uh, you know so i think kerala also generally it doesn't have any like national security pulwama balakot these are not going to find any echo like in tamil nadu like in andhra or telangana much resonance out here in kerala kerala it would be you see generally uh, for example there is this anti incumbency against the cpm which is there they are on the other hand they are trying to put it against the modi government wherein they are saying that we have to counter the modi government at the center because of its unemployment because of this that so they are bringing such issues not the national security issue or the hindutva issue as such it is not working congress again particularly the way the uh, you know left failed to manage the floods you know that is one of the issues that the congress is trying to portray so all these issues then of course the plight of the farmer the rubber plantations this all the related the general issues in kerala that will always the uh, poor uh, you know condition of the miserable condition of the fisher folk you know all these issues are there but uh, national issues generally don't have a greater resonance you know uh, as a, it is mostly on local issues and ideological please remember kerala is a very ideologically and also communally polarized state mm. notwithstanding the 100% literacy kerala is deeply driven divided by caste sub caste region language you know uh, i mean uh, uh, religion this makes a lot of you know impact Now, for example if mr rahul gandhi has decided to go to vayanad with a you know sizable section of the uh, majority uh, minority community which is there it is because you know there is this deep ideological divide i mean come to think of it like you say that now cpim m is confined to kerala only please remember post partition kerala is the only state which has any remnants of uh, the muslim league left you know which is uh, not there in any other part of the country so it's a unique uh, kind of a state where all kinds of forces you have political parties based on religion you have you know uh, for example the kerala congress uh, kcm mani and the other uh, you know factions of kerala congress it is basically uh, a, a, a result of a feeling that congress has been neglecting the christians so it's right. basically christian so you know you have all these kinds of uh, factions which are working there so uh, that is the scenario that is so far so all these uh, issues are going to their religious issues you know so it's going to be all be local issues rather than national issues that are going to dominate certainly the not the national security and hindu the right. larger those issues that are being uh, debated out here in the north yeah. is certainly not finding echo in south All in right. Kerala. All right. On that note then we'll slip into a short break on the other side we'll take a look at some of the key constituencies in Kerala and also we'll talk about the Shabrimala issue. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching India Votes 2019 on Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Frank Rajan Pereira talking about the elections in Kerala now that goes to polls in the third phase on April 23 let's talk about one issue that has been making headlines over the last few months that is of course the shabrimala issue kevi prasad how big an issue do you think is the shabrimala issue on the ground in kerala no i mean i haven't been to kerala personally but whatever reports one re kept on reading from the time the judgment came i think the popular mood was been reflected in all the reports that came the people were not happy with what was delivered and uh, obviously the issue 
gain traction because political parties uh, also had their own share of uh, whipping up this or going with the sentiment of the people. Uh, I think that that is what remains. But will that convert into some kind of electoral issue that would in turn help a political party which espouses that cause and works with the people is what we have to see because the voting is to take place in a week from now. But certainly it was it is an issue that remained on the table. It was remained in popular discourse and people were uh, uh, I mean there was agitation among people and we saw that on the streets. So I think as such to say that it's not an issue sitting so far away from the state is not fair. So have the political parties, uh, Rajesh Sundaram, been able to take advantage of the situa situation? Have they been able to, you know, turn it around in their favour? The Shabari Mala issue. Yes. I think the BJP, of course, is, would be a biggest gainer in this, you know, in terms of uh, weaning away some of the, the communities away from, you know, traditional CPM voters, like for instance, the Irvas, uh, the Dalits maybe, on, on this particular issue. Uh, definitely, you know, the Congress has been a fence sitter and then you have the central leadership saying something and the state leadership saying something and it's uh, the CPM uh, which has of course gone and followed the the order of the Supreme Court in letter and spirit uh, at least uh, on paper they've been doing that so yes I think they've been distinct uh, positions that they've taken uh, with the with the Congress sitting on the fence or uh, you know tending to uh, support uh, the agitation and the BJP going very aggressively for this so, and all of them hope that they will gain, but I think the biggest gainer from all of this would be the BJP. How much that translates into seats is something that remains to be seen. But in terms of the, the popular vote, in terms of the vote percentage, uh, the gainer in this would definitely be uh, the BJP from, from where I see. KG Suresh, the BJP would be the gainer is what Rajesh Sundaram is suggesting. But has the BJP done enough in the state really to ensure that the Shabri Mala issue is completely pocketed by the BJP and it actually translates into a seat. Well, yeah, it has not been able to pocket. You see, as I said, that uh, the organizational structure of the BJP, the leadership is not present there to encash on such a... They have been able to create a momentum, no doubt, particularly at the peak of it. Now, there is an allegation against them that, you know, that in many parts after the Supreme Court and now that the elections have been announced, those night vigils and all these things have been abandoned. So, that is also one thing that people say, that they were doing it only for the political purpose. The Congress has also played, uh, you know, uh, the soft Hindutva. Uh, and the CPM, though, you see, please try to understand, initially the CPM also did not take any stand. As I said, their constituency is largely Hindu. So, they also did not take that stand. But gradually, uh, because of the pressure from the national media, uh, the national, the intellectuals at the national level who said, what is the CPM doing? They claim to be progressive. They are only progressive so far as other issues are concerned. Why not about Kerala issues? So only under pressure, they made a symbolically, and the dead of the night, they got one or two people to go there, took them in a vehicle and symbolically made that entry to say, look, we have done it. They did not do it from their hearts because they knew that they are going to lose it. In fact, on record, the Devasom minister, you know, Devasom minister is the person looking after the temple affairs. So he had gone on record saying that this is not, it is not our job to provide escort and security to every pilgrim, you know, who would like to uh, visit. So they have also been trying to uh, play that. But as I said, uh, as Rajesh also put it, no doubt that BJP is going to gain. But the vote share may increase, but will it be able to translate into seats? That is something. So you will see uh, as a result of the Shabrimala thing that there will be an overall uh, in terms of vote share, BJP will get a higher vote share. But whether it would translate into seats and if so, how many seats? That remains to be seen. Absolutely. It remains to be seen and we'll know exactly on May 23rd which way actually the Shabrimala issue and other issues have gone on the ground in Kerala. Talking about the ground in Kerala, here are political reactions from Kerala on the Shabrimala issue. For any Supreme Court verdict, there are only two ways you can resolve it. One is the court itself overturns its decision. That's a judicial review and that requires a review petition. The central government of the BJP never submitted a review petition. Congress party did. The second way is to introduce a law or an ordinance. The BJP is in power, it's got a humongous majority in the Lok Sabha, never introduced the law. Shashi Tharoor stands up on the 19th of December and asks for a law. Minister says, I'll look into it and come back. Never comes back. 
budget session, 5th of February, I again stand up and ask, this time no reply. So anything that they could have done while in power to help ease the pain of the believers, they never did. So we are trying to point out to the believers, and some people have begun to sit up and take notice, you've been had. The BJP does not deserve your vote because what can they do by winning your votes that they couldn't have done when they already had power? Irrespective of caste, creed, religion, uh, language, state, whole people are coming there. It's a place of national integration. So we can't say that it is, a, a, we can't uh, use this issue uh, for political needs. BJP never did it. BJP took this issue only because it is the main social center of the entire humanity. So we have to interfere in that issue. That is all. It is the, the subject based uh, related to the faith of the faith, belief, tradition, custom of the of a society. So they interfered in the issue, not for any political means. The matter is uh, related to the constitution bench of the Supreme Court announcing its judgment on a, a long-standing litigation, which in fact took 12 years for the Supreme Court to hear the arguments and all that. Mm -hmm. So th there, was, there was no hastiness in the entire process. It took 12 years for the Supreme Court to take a decision. Mm -hmm. Then once the constitution bench of the Supreme Court takes a decision, any state government, even if it had been led by a BJP, you know, dispensation, they would have been constitutionally compelled to implement it. Another interesting aspect, which uh, during the course of the election, when we engage in discussion, uh, when allegations are being heard, we clarify to them that as soon as the Supreme Court verdict came out, BJP leadership welcomed it, RSS welcomed, welcomed it, Congress welcomed it, left us to welcome it. All right, those were the political reactions really from the ground in Kerala on the Shabrimala issue. Before I move on to the key uh, constituencies in Kerala, K.V. Prasad, now that we've heard the political reactions from uh, Kerala, a quick reaction on Shabrimala and then I'll move on. Well, I think uh, it was a toss-up between a constitutional uh, issue with the government of the day, trying to implement what was given to it by the court, and on the other hand, the political expediency of other political parties. So, you so run the, with it. So, so, yeah, so you run with it and the matter rests there but, is what you're suggesting. But you suggesting. see, yeah. the interesting thing is that the otherwise progressive CPM is not taking a stand on it. It is mm. only saying because the it's a constitution bench decision, any government would have to implement it. It's not saying, no, this is the correct thing and that this is in the interest of women, empowerment and all that thing that they say in other matters. On this matter, they are quiet because they know that there will be a backlash. So, you know, the political mm. parties have realized that it's a sensitive issue. Yes. So, they're all really playing Absolutely. safe as far as the Shabrimala <laughs> issue is concerned. It's a toss up between <laughs> being politically correct and <laughs> societal issues. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. All right. Moving on then. There are several contests that everyone is looking forward to in Kerala. Let's take a look at some of the key contestants in the state. With a total of 243 candidates in the fray for Kerala's 20 Lok Sabha constituencies, the state will see a three-way race between CPIM-led LDF, Congress-led UDF and the BJP-led NDA. Among the 20 constituencies, Vainad is in the national spotlight with Congress President Rahul Gandhi deciding to contest from the seat. The decision led to a lot of bickering between the Congress and the left parties, with the latter accusing the Congress of being unclear on who they want to oppose, the BJP or the left. Considering the BJP has not put up a contestant here and has instead given the seat to its ally, the BDJS. Rahul Gandhi will be up against CPI's PP Sunir, while the BDJS has put up its president, Tushar Vellapalli, on the seat. Tiruvannandapuram will also witness a tricky contest between heavyweights. Congress-led UDF has fielded former Under-Secretary General of United Nations and sitting MP Shashi Tharoor against former Mizoram Governor BJP's Kummanam Rajasekharan. CPI's C. Devakaran is the LDF candidate from this seat. 
Other prominent contestants include IUML's National General Secretary PK Kunjali Kutti from Malappuram where he takes on BJP's Unni Krishnan and CPIM's VP Sanu. Besides Tiruvannanthapuram, the BJP is also hopeful of its chances in Ernakulam, Thrissur and Pattanam Titta. In Thrissur, the cultural capital of Kerala, the party has fielded actor-turned-politician Suresh Gobi. He will be up against Rajaji Matthew Thomas of the CPI and T.N. Pradhaban of the Congress. What has made the fight interesting here is the polarization due to the Shabarimala issue. The seat is currently held by the LDF. In the assembly elections held in 2016, LDF had won all seven assembly segments in the parliamentary seat quite comfortably. Considering this, it should be a cakewalk for the ruling coalition in the state, but the BJP is banking on its Shabarimala stand and Suresh Gobi's huge popularity. In Patanam Titta, too, the main issue is Shabarimala, which falls in the district. The BJP is planning to milk the issue as it emerges as the hot topic in these elections. The contest here will be between Veena George of the CPIM, BJP's K. Surendran and Congress's Anto Antony. Arnakulam is expected to see a close fight between Union Minister K.J. Alphonse, Congress MLA Haibi Eden and CPM's P. Rajiv. Even though Haibi Eden is considered to have the upper hand here, the CPIM has decided to give a tough fight. The party has fielded one of its most popular and dynamic faces, P. Rajiv, a former Rajya Sabha MP and the party's Arnakulam district secretary. The BJP is also banking on another one of its A-plus seats, Palakkad. The contest here is between sitting CPM MP MB Rajesh, Congress's VK Srikandan and BJP's Krishna Kumar C. Palakkad is the first district where the BJP registered its presence, winning the municipal elections and having its candidate elected as mayor. But defeating the CPM candidate will be a tough task. The politically sensitive Karnur Lok Sabha constituency is also considered a CPM fortress, but since being formed as a parliamentary constituency, it has elected Congress candidates more times than CPM candidates. This time, the BJP is also putting up a strong fight. The seat will see a fight between CPM's PK Srimadhi teacher, who is also the sitting MP, Congress's K Sudhakaran and BJP's C K Padwanabhan. Well, those are some of the key constituencies and key contests really in Kerala, taking the discussion forward on the key constituencies and contests. Uh, Rajesh Sundra, you know, as far as some of the key contests and key constituencies that we are looking at, Wayanad was one of them, but is it key only because Rahul Gandhi is contesting from there because it's a pocket borough seat of the Congress, really? Yes, it, it is a safe seat for the, the Congress. But I think out of all of this, you know, what you'd see is whose party is going, is the BJP going to spoil? So, in many of these constituencies, they have the numbers to spoil the chances of either the UDF or the LDF candidate. So, of course, like you said, Wayanad is, is a safe seat for him and they've been out campaigning. It also helps. Uh, that you know the the minority vote would consolidate behind the uh, the, uh, the Congress uh, at, at this time, so it helps them. But really, I think if you go constituency by constituency and with with the with the kind of strengths that BJP has, the, the amount of vote share that they've added, you know whose chance would would they spoil? You know, so that's something that one has to look at. And some of these would be extremely close fights uh, where the BJP may or may not win, but. Of course, it, would, it, would, it could spoil the chance of one or the other of the main parties. Absolutely. And talking about some of the other key contest, uh, contests, Ernakulam, there are two heavyweights there. P. Raji, former Rajya Sabha MP. There's also Alphonse, who's a union minister. And there's Haibi Eden, a young leader, really, as far as the Congress is concerned. He is also the son of a former senior Congress leader. Well, no doubt, uh, you know, Alphonse being the union minister, you know, it has acquired a high profile constituency status. But BJP as such doesn't have, uh, you know, the kind of thing that you would have in say Tiruvananthapuram or Trisur or Patanam Titta. That kind of a thing is not there. But then certainly, yes, the, they, there is a serious effort being made to bring around the Christian voters also 
towards you know uh, alphonse alphonse has a very good relationship incidentally not only with the uh, uh, with the christian organizations but also with the uh, cpim in fact uh, he was uh, he himself has openly said that he is good friends with the chief minister himself so uh, alphonse has good uh, relations in the constituency no doubt but i really wonder whether you know he would be able to uh, make it uh, because it's not a very traditional that way a bjp stronghold uh, unlike other places uh, so uh, yes because the union minister is contesting and the only phase of kerala in the union council of ministers so certainly all eyes on that constituency talking about all eyes on a particular constituency tiruvanthapuram or trivandrum <laughs> as it is known uh, kv prasad well tough, certainly tough, mo- tough contest that do you think tough for two reasons one of course mr shashi tharoor has some good friends both within the party when i say friends i put them within quotes mm-hmm. so that's something congress has a issue uh, there obviously there is always local resistance and then you have a challenge coming in the form of a bjp strong man there and obviously he is going to test his wares this time and uh, so that's going to be a big challenge both for an anti incumbency for the sitting minister sitting sorry a former union minister and now a candidate from the same constituency high profile very articulate he works into some difficult situations at times uh we i don't know if the tulavaram incident which resulted in an injury would get him some uh, a different kind of advantage or disadvantage we don't know about all that uh it is tough definitely it's and anyway it's a very well it's a metropolis in the way highly in capital, any, of, the capital of the state so it, it has its own dimension and dynamics all right taking the discussion forward now rajesh sundaram where do you think this election is going to be won or lost in kerala well uh, like i said you know that the deciding factor in many of the constituencies could be the kind of uh, vote share that the bjp could move away from either of the two but i think uh, looking at it right now uh, going by what analysis has come out and the cyclical nature we before we go into the elections it, it is an advantage that the the udf has to start with so that's what we have to look at but then having said that some of these constituencies could go this way or that depending on the kind of votes uh, or, or whose party the bjp spoils in the, in those uh, constituencies as well so some of them uh, would 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 be uh, influential also i think there is a, a good chance that the bjp may open its account uh, in the lok sabha uh, with these uh, elections you know out in in the three or four constituencies that, that we mentioned right you know uh, one thing also that is different about kerala when you compare it to the other southern states is the lack of money power really that we get to see being spent during election time in kerala corruption do you think kg suresh is a big issue or not really because not much money goes around in kerala yeah uh, the way it is um, happening in the neighboring uh, tamil nadu or in karnataka, karnataka andhra yeah uh, that way as i said it's because of that 100% literacy rate you see as i said film stars don't work there you know uh, so uh, just celebrity being a celebrity doesn't work there so it's about it's a very politically conscious state where people are but at the same time it's very polarized the state where caste c- community you know uh, religion all these things matter so there the priorities are different and people have a reasonably you know uh, what should i say uh, uh, standard of living is there uh, you know primary health care the fundamental issues are there so even the central governments many of the schemes which they are cashing in on in the rest of the country like ujjwala toilet you know Bharat. ayushman that is not of much relevance so far as kerala is concerned because kerala is a state where successive governments have been doing a lot of social security uh, things systems are in place in fact they say that the primary health care is up to european standards you know that is the way uh, you know it is looked at but having said that as i said the floods people have been you know totally uh, i would say that uh, uh, the lost a lot of things a lot of people particularly in south kerala so you know the failure of the government and then uh, you see for if i look at kerala scenario i think that for congress and the ldf it is a battle where every seat is going to count for bjp there is nothing they are not going to lose anything but they will only win you see for them they have to open their account they have to have one or two seats they are not going to lose anything but for they are not really banking on kerala yeah for them that's not a win win kind of a thing i mean where they are going to lose or anything like that but 
for congress and ldf each and every for ldf it is a matter of survival and for congress every seat is going to count for its national ambitions of ousting the bjp so i think that it is a battle royale between these two where bjp is hoping that in the clash between the two they will be able to make some space for themselves right kavi prasad this is going to be is this election going to be a referendum on the uh, local state government as well and is that going to set the ball rolling for the elections See, to come if, later if we look at it across the vindhyas the bjp barring karnataka is not a factor in this in the sense it's there it's contesting but it's the primary fight is between two other parties like suresh mentioned it is udf versus ldf in kerala in tamil nadu is the both dravidian parties and in andhra you just had uh, chandrababu isr and uh, you know what happens in telangana so that is having the, the issue so where is the question is so it's a question of survival fair enough for cpm because not only does it lose a face on the national politics i mean its own imprint without having a presence in national politics by in terms of members of parliament it affects its ability to uh, exert pressure in policy making they respect the government that comes to power i mean if it's a government which they think if they the, the all these parties together can oust modi and bring somebody else it still has has to have mps to have a say if if that's going to be not there its effectiveness as a political party which has a voice in opposition today and probably thinks it can have a voice as say it had in the upa days that will be lost right that will be the, that is something which is it has to contend with and think how is going to do it absolutely and uh, rajesh sundaram close the show for us with your concluding remarks well i think there there's a lot that is to be seen here you know like for instance uh, uh, we know that the the congress has got an advantage the udf has an advantage but also one would look at the bjp and how they perform you know because this is a state uh, which which has got a significant rss presence have not been able to uh, capitalize. capitalize on that so all eyes would be there you know on how many seats they are able to win if they are able to open their account so that's uh, Uh, what, what i would be looking at this absolutely the bjp needs to look for new avenues is also what yes. you're suggesting and kerala could be that but whether it'll actually translate into seats remains to be seen all right with that it's a wrap on this edition of india votes 2019 thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us uh, that's it from me see you again next time